Hello, Aggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today's question comes to us from Rodney Roller. Okay, he is KD9WCK, and he has an interesting question, uh, and I assume that there may be an HOA involved here, but not sure. Uh, can I run an antenna wire along the ridge of my house? I have a small yard without adequate trees. And um, so we're going to take a look at his house and look at some options that he might be able to use. There are some caveats to this. Before we jump into the whiteboard, I'd like to pay special thanks to Terry Winters, a new patron. Uh, he, you too, can become a patron by going to patreon.com slash ke0og. Let's take a look. He has a house. Uh, let's see, we'll just draw a house. Here's the ridge up here, and he wants to put an antenna along the ridge of the house. Now, there are many, many, many things that can make this work well or not well. And as is always the case, the first thing about, let's look at the top of his house, okay. This is the ridge right here, okay. Now, if, 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 and this is a big if, if the top of your roof has, um, you, there's kinds of plastic sheeting over plywood, and underneath you have insulation that is backed with craft paper. That's the way it's normally done, this craft paper. And then you have wood beams here. You are in luck because this actually is pretty transparent to radio waves. Now, one thing that can mess all that up, like a, a copper roof, painted copper roof, or um, if they use foil, aluminum foil, instead of uh, plastic. Uh, also, if the insulation is put up in there and it's aluminum foil backed, that will be a problem. Uh, most of the foil, now I say craft, it's K R A. F T and craft is a kind of paper. Okay, it's kind of a stiff paper. So if all those matter, you can run it along. So what you would do is you know again looking at the front of your house. Okay, you're going to, you could either just lay it on the top. That's not best. If you could put it up a few inches, that's better. Okay, if you've got problems in the roof of different kinds of stuff, what you want to do is put up a mast and bring the antenna across here and take that down in there. Now, that all depends on uh, what you have available for you. The other option, you mentioned you have a small backyard. Small backyards can be great for antennas. Let's look at your house here. Okay, and you've got some tree or something that's on somebody else's property, and you've got a fence. Let's say this is 20 feet by 20 feet. Okay. 400 square foot backyard, that's not very much. You can, if you want, uh, take two pieces of aluminum, not aluminum, they're steel, chain link fence top rail. That's chain link fence top rail. And they are fluted at the end so it fits into the next one. You can put two of these on top of each other. Just put a little duct tape here to keep it in, in place. Guy it with some UV resistant something. You can buy what are called concrete 
form stakes. Not from your local restaurant, but from Home Depot or uh, Lowe's. Concrete form stakes are the stakes. You can get them in two, you can get them one foot, two foot, and three foot lengths. Uh, for this, I think two foot is probably fine. And then you could run your antenna from this out to the back. And it doesn't have to be uh, perfect. You could go up here and then come down to the fence with an inverted V or something like that. Now let me show you another option that you have for this backyard. And that is the uh, DX Commander antenna. And I mention that one because it's the least expensive of the multiband verticals. It's actually a fan vertical. Uh, it's plastic. It's designed for portable use. I mean, uh, it does work. I've got one. I tested it. Uh, some people thought I didn't put it together correctly, but I got to work. Well, I don't know what more they want, but you've got your 20-foot um, square. Put the antenna up here. You will need to guy it because it doesn't stick into the ground. Okay, that's easy enough again with those stakes. And then put your radials out here, as many as you can, within reason. You can put the radials out here. You can buy radial wire directly from um, DX Commander, or you can get it less expensively at um, Home Depot. This is an example of that wire. This is 12 gauge. Insulated, I recommend insulated wire for radials. It's uh, stranded, so it is ever so much easier to handle and solder and all of those things like that. But you can use this for those radials and put out 10 to 20, somewhere in there, and you'll have a really good looking antenna, a good working antenna. The antenna is black. So if you've got like trees behind here, people going along the street won't have to look at it. Um, also, there are things called garden staples. These staples are about this size. Okay, and you can pick them up in the garden section of anything that has a garden section. These are staples. So you lay out a radio have a friend of yours hold it tight while you put these staples in over it like this to hold it firmly against the ground. In a season or two, those radials will have completely disappeared from view and you will be able to mow right across the top of it. Uh, these, like I get, said, get the full-size garden staples. And then you can get this thing all nice down and flat. All that will show up is this black. And you can make the guy wires dark gray or whatever you want them. Just make sure they're UV resistant. And you'll have a very sweet antenna system, 40 through uh, 6 meters. Okay? Work very, very nicely. And uh, that will take care of something in the yard. So let me see if I've answered your question. You say you have a small yard without adequate trees. I gotta tell you, I got the same problem. Uh, what we have here are pinion pines. They grow a max of about 35 feet tall. Normal is around 25 feet. And if I were to attach an antenna to part of the tree that doesn't sway very much in the wind, I'm really no more than seven or eight feet in the air. So they're not great antenna trees. So I use that system of the two chain link fence uh, top rails connected together and guide those and it works wonderfully. Now I will grant you that 20 feet off the ground is not great for a dipole. We're working on building a taller mast. Somebody's given us an idea for a taller one and we're going to uh, wait until we get the thing all the way ready. I've got a couple more parts I need to get to it. It might be a reliable way to build a 30-foot uh, tall mast. Uh, it's a lot heavier than the 20-foot tall mast, so I worry about it falling. 
So we'll put this thing up so it's very, very sturdy um, and with three foot stakes probably uh, to use it. I live on an acre and so we don't have any landscaping. In fact, we're not allowed to. We're supposed to leave it natural. And so that makes it really easy to put up temporary antennas and move them out of the way. So Rod, there you go. I tried to give you a few ideas that you could work with uh, to get that antenna up. I hope to meet you on the air. Uh, that vertical out there out back will actually give you rather better performance uh, than a dipole that's close to the roof of your house. Um, you do have options. I mean, if you have a really wicked uh, homeowners association, you might try Magloop out in the backyard. People don't know what Magloops are when they look at it. I actually have a picture from somebody who put his MFJ mag loop out in the backyard up about 15 feet high and hung a bird feeder from the middle and then took these fake um, ivy leaves and the ones you can get down at Hobby Lobby, put them around it like that, and everybody thought it was a bird feeder. It was, you know, cool. And he was able to uh, work, that, work that very, very well. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel financially, you may certainly do so by going to decastlercom support. Also, please subscribe, please like. By the way, when you subscribe, it doesn't hurt you or help you either way, but it does put your vote of confidence in the channel that this is something that should be referred to other people. Uh, if you do want notification, click the little bell that goes with the uh, subscribe button. Okay, and uh, let's see. To reach me with questions, uh, send it to me if you're a patron. Use the patron messaging uh, system. Uh, if you want to do email and attachments, send that to askdave at arrl.org, O-R-G. And if you, worst comes to worse, and you want to send me something uh, a little bit different, you can send it to Dave Kassler, K-E-0-O-G, at P.O. Box 98, Ridgeway, Colorado, 81432. Until we next meet, 73.